Welcome to uh, Catanet TV. I'm John Reed, the CEO of Cat Alliance, and the host and moderator of, uh, of the series uh, that we're having with thought leaders. And we're very pleased uh, this morning to be joined by Damon Ramsey, medical doctor, founder of uh, InputHealth.com, and a passionate champion of innovation in healthcare, also a member of our healthcare advisory board. And Damon, it's been interesting. We posted the, uh, the theme for this session. It generated quite a bit of social media conversation. So I'm actually interested in how you answer the question. Damon, how would Steve Jobs deliver Canadian health care? Over to you in Vancouver. Hey, thank you so much, uh, John, for having me. And uh, hello, everyone in the audience. Um, I'd, I'd like to preface my answer by saying that I certainly, I certainly don't have the authority to speak on behalf of Steve Jobs. That being said, um, I have met the man by proxy through the technology he's built, and I've been a very passionate observer um, of the patterns in which he's approached uh, different industries, whether it was personal computing, mobile computing, or the music industry. So um, jumping, into, jumping into an answer, I, I believe um, one of the most basic principles that Steve Jobs followed that we could draw upon is a, an obsessive focus on user-based design. Um, the interface, which is so unbelievably underemphasized in, in healthcare technology, um, would have been made his first priority. I think that, that much is obvious. And it seems like in, in, our, in our software world, in our healthcare IT software world, um, it's very much an afterthought. Um, Steve, Steve was brilliant in the sense that he, he, he tackled this gargantuan task of being able to, in all his products, merge the form and the function um, so as to make this, this holistic product, um, which wh whether it was the iPad or the, the iPhone or, or even the Mac OS, um, connected well with the, with the beautiful uh, hardware that he produced. And I think, um, paradoxically, in, in healthcare technology, we, we emphasize function so much at the expense of form that often everything is failing to function properly. And th that's very much opposite to, to sort of the Steve approach. Um, everything is fragmented and siloed, and we have multiple vendors for every particular task, and they're, they're not connecting, they're not interoperable, um, they're not consistent. And I think that sort of leads to a second very basic principle that he followed, which, that he never, which was that he never compromised. Um, he, and he didn't accept legacy systems and the status quo, the inadequate, um, ugly software. He, ne he never accepted that. What he, what he did was he actually he destroyed it. Um, he, he was very much a, um, a silverback gorilla when it comes to the healthcare technology world. And I think uh, um, that, that sort of led to, to his legacy in, in producing software that inspires people um, as opposed to disenfranchises them, which is what, what I see in healthcare technology today. David, that's an excellent perspective. What we like to do uh, in our interviews is, is a call to action. So uh, I give you the floor, give Canadians, uh, give the technology leaders and our thought leaders and our citizens, what, what's your call to action? A call to action. Well, I, I love. I have so many calls to action, but I think I'll I'll tailor this one um, specifically to healthcare decision makers. Uh, that's the you know the CEOs in the hospitals, um, the the health authorities, the people who control the budgets, the health ministers across our beautiful country. Um, and I, I have a very very simple call to action, and that is to to embrace new technologies, not. Um, not continue with this traditional enterprise approach where basically large enterprise vendors are the only ones allowed in. I think that there's this, there's this new movement in Canada um, where there are actually progressive healthcare professionals, physicians, nurses, um, this younger generation um, which basically has this desire for better technology and they've even begun, they've begun to build it themselves. And I think uh, it requires the decision makers to be open to these new ideas. Um, to embrace them and harness them, because because in that in that crowd, inevitably you're going to find people and organizations that have similarities to to Steve Jobs and Apple, and um, they're just beginning to ripen. And I think the, my biggest fear is um, that the environment here actually might encourage people to move south of the border, where they might be more um, embracing of progressive technology. So. Um, not to not to talk forever, but you know Steve Jobs talks about staying hungry and staying foolish, 
in one of his uh, talks at a university. And I think because healthcare is so very different than these other industries that he, he tapped into, um, because building well-designed technology um, actually can result in saving people's lives, reducing mortality and morbidity, preventing disease. I mean, the stakes are so much higher here, and it requires um, leadership, uh, leadership that is embracing of these new technologies. Um, as, as a doctor and a software entrepreneur myself, I think there's no sector in the world um, as interesting and as exciting as this one. And I think it would have been on Steve's hit list, um, if his if his life wasn't unfortunately cut so short, um, but his, in his absence, I think between all of us, uh, we can certainly follow his legacy, and and I I think we should, we definitely should. Damon, an excellent perspective, a very important conversation for Canadians to engage in, critical to building Canada's competitive innovation nation, and you very much a leader in your own right. Uh, let's build on this conversation and make Canada the best innovator in terms of healthcare development and delivery. So thanks again for joining us from uh, Vancouver and, and have, have a great day. Thank you so much.